this tutorial, I wanted to show you how I created this horse using charcoal. And I'll show you what I'm doing step by step along the way and also give you some tips that might be useful in your own artwork. So let's get into it. I'm Kirsty Rebecca and I make drawing and painting tutorials that are easy to follow even if you're just starting out. I'm working on Claire Fontaine pastel mat because the texture is like a fine sandpaper and it really grips the charcoal well and allows multiple layers. But you can use whatever paper you have. I'd recommend using something smooth like a watercolour paper or some archival drawing paper just because the smoother the paper the less your pencil strokes will show in the end. I'm using a variety of different charcoal suppliers that I accumulated over the years but honestly if I was just starting out with charcoal again I would recommend getting a set of the General's charcoal pencils, a white charcoal pencil, some charcoal powder, and a eraser and a Tombow mono eraser, which is kind of like a mechanical pencil, but it's a tiny eraser and it's good for the small details. And I'll put a link in the description to all of the supplies that I would recommend if you want to check them out. So you'll see me using a bunch of different pencils, but that's just because I have them and I don't want to waste them. I used transfer paper to get my outline onto my paper, but you can freehand if you like. If you're working on pastel mat and you want to freehand, I would recommend freehanding on a separate piece of paper and then transferring your drawing with transfer paper onto your pastel mat. This paper is quite hard to erase and it also damages the paper and it can leave marks quite easily. So doing your initial drawing separately, you can do all the erasing on there and then transfer it when you're happy with it. I'm using a dark charcoal pencil like a 6B and I'm blocking in all the darker areas I can see in my reference photo. Try to go in the general direction of the object or the fur because although we'll blend out the charcoal you may see some of the pencil strokes in the end so it's better to have them going in the right direction so it looks natural. Then I'm blocking in the mid-tones and you can use a 4B or a 2B charcoal pencil for this. I've left the lightest parts alone to let the white of the paper show through. It can be really hard to erase the charcoal back to the white of the paper, so it's easier to just leave those parts white to start with. I'm going in with a blending stump to blend out my charcoal, and you can also use a cotton tip to blend, which I do quite often because I always have them lying around and they're really inexpensive. These two are great for smaller areas, and if you want to blend a larger area, you can use your fingers or a tissue wrapped around your finger to blend as well. Once you've blended the first layer, you can go back through and darken up those values. Usually when you blend out your piece, the values get a bit lighter, so adding layers will help smooth out the charcoal as well as giving your values right. I'm using the Tombow Mono Eraser to lift up some of the charcoal in the areas where I put too much down. And this eraser is great because it's like a mechanical pencil, but it's a small eraser, so it's really good for pulling out the small details. Here I'm actually using sandpaper and some charcoal sticks to create charcoal powder because I didn't have any, but I would recommend just buying some charcoal powder because it's much easier, more cost effective and has a nicer, smoother texture. And I started out by using a soft paintbrush to apply the charcoal but realized that it was taking too long, so I changed to a soft tool and that's S-O-F-F-T to apply the powder. I wanted an out of focus background and the powder is a really easy way to do that without having pencil strokes showing. So I'm going through and pulling out any white details with the Tombow Mono Eraser again, but it doesn't get quite as white as I would have hoped, so I'm using the white charcoal pencil to lighten up those areas and sharpen up the lines. I'm also going through and adding more detail with the charcoal pencil to make some areas look more defined. It's just a layering process with charcoal. You usually start with a layer that's a little bit messier with minimal detail and as you continue to layer you can add more and more details. If you add too much detail in the first few layers you'll end up blending it out and having to redo all the details anyway. So I just continue to go back and forth between adding details with the black and the white charcoal, erasing some areas and then blending some of the pencil strokes out to give it a smoother look in some areas. The white charcoal pencil is useful in the end to bring out some of those fine white hairs like around the mouth and nose and some of the loose strands in the mane. If you struggle to sharpen your charcoal pencils to a fine point because they keep breaking, then I'll link a video below that shows you how you can do it. The video is actually for pastel pencils but they are very similar like in texture and the techniques will be the same for charcoal. But in general, I sharpen the wood casing away with a Stanley knife or a craft knife so I don't waste my charcoal inside a sharpener. And then if I want a really fine point, I'll use a manual crank handle sharpener. Charcoal or graphite is a great way to learn to draw realistically if you're just starting out. 
You don't have to worry about colour and the most important thing when trying to create realistic artwork is to get your values correct. So making sure that your shadows are dark enough and your highlights are light enough is really important. Charcoal helps you learn to see those values a bit easier because you can't rely on colours to differentiate between shapes or depths. If you aren't sure whether you're finished or not, or you think something looks a little bit off with your artwork, a good tip is to take a photo of your artwork and check it against your reference photo on your phone or your computer side by side. And that way you'll easily be able to spot the differences on your artwork and then you can adjust them accordingly. If you find that you're getting charcoal on your hands or you're smudging your artwork, then you can place a piece of paper down underneath your hand to rest on so your hand isn't touching the artwork directly and you're not smudging it. When you're working in charcoal, it's best to press lightly with your pencil and build up your darker areas in layers, rather than going straight in with a heavy hand in those darker areas. It's easy to remove charcoal if you press lightly and it's easier to blend out your pencil strokes for a smoother finish than if you pressed really hard with your pencil to start with. I always tape my work down to my desk or a board with masking tape so that it doesn't move around when I'm working on it and the corners won't curl up this way either. It gives you a nice clean border without any charcoal on it to hold onto and it makes it easier to frame as well. The main benefit that I find to using charcoal over graphite is that it's a matte finish. Graphite tends to have a shine in areas that are really dark or where you've pressed a bit too hard with your pencil, whereas charcoal tends to stay matte. If the reference photo you're working from is in color, then change it into black and white to make it easier for yourself. Trying to create black and white artwork from a colour photo is really hard, even for the experienced artist. So make it easier by editing your reference into grayscale as well. I've got a playlist on the screen that I think you'll find helpful, so click on that and I'll see you over there.